Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about load balancing using static routes, as you see here the title. Uh, so we'll be using static routes just for the purpose of load balancing packets between different to the same destination network between different routes. So what I have done basically, I have pre-configured routers with IP address just to d don't waste time for this presentation. Uh, I go to RT2 for example, in RT2 I can show you the uh, IP address, so IP interface brief. These are the IP addresses for RT, RT2. So we have two serial interfaces. They are already configured with IP address. Also, I, al I uh, already configured the static route. Okay, this the uh, routing table with a static route, so I can display only the static route. So I have a route to the segment 10.1.1.0, which is this uh, segment here. I have another route to 10.1.3.0, which is uh, this uh, segment here. Uh, I have a route to LAN 172.16.0.0 and a route to 172.16.0.0, which is this LAN here. Of course, I have to choose the uh, exit interface. Here I use the exit interface. So the router, whenever it receives a packet destined to this network, it should simply uh, follow this packet through this exit interface for the packet to reach the destination. The same thing if router receives a packet to this destination network, it should follow it through this exit interface. So for example, 10.1.3.0, it should be exit through, it should exit through. 001. This is the case. So if I receive a packet to 10.1.3.0 network, this segment here, the router is going to forward it through this exit interface. So I have done this and the uh, same story with the other LAN. So the static routes have been configured and uh, RT2 knows how to reach every network. So for 72.16.0.0, the exit interface is serial 000, okay, to reach this segment. And for uh, segment 172.31.0.0, the exit interface is serial 001. So if RT2 receives a packet to this segment here, it should simply forward it through serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. Okay, uh, I have done also the same thing with uh, RT3. No, RT3, I can show you that I have, uh, I already pre-configured the IP address for the interfaces, serial interface 000 and 001. So we already have interface uh, IP address assigned to these two interfaces, plus uh, the IP address. I just display show show IP route, sorry, show IP route, display only the static. So also it does the same thing. I configured the static routes to network uh, 10100, which is this, this one here. Another static route to network 10120, 10120. And a static route to network 172.16.0.0 uh, and uh, another static route to network 172.31.0.0 and of course I specify the exit interface through which packets can be forwarded, uh, should be forwarded uh, if in the case router receives the packet to the destination network. Okay, so now what will happen basically I'm going to configure RT1 as you notice here I'm going to show you that I already configured uh, show IP interface brief. I already configured the IP addresses, right, for this router. This router has the fast Ethernet 00 and serial 000, serial 001 uh, interfaces, which are being which have been configured with IP address. And the same story with uh, RT4. RT4 is the same thing here. We I display show IP interface brief. Display the IP address already assigned. Okay, so we have al also also the fast Ethernet 001 interface, 00 interface, sorry, the serial 000 and the serial 0 slash 2 slash 0. So three interfaces are used in RT4. Okay, now what I do, RT1, I'm, uh, I'm going to configure RT1 to load balance packets between two paths, the two routes. Okay, there are two routes here, path 1 and path 2. So the packet, in order for the packet to reach this destination network, 172.31.0.0, so the packet goes this way, the first packet goes this way, the second packet goes the second way. I mean, we have one route here and the second route here, okay? So we have two paths, actually. The first path will be followed by, for example, one packet, and the second route, and the second route will be used by the second packet. So we have load balancing. Of course, uh, I'm using Cisco Packet Tracer, 
in real routers you will have more control on how to do this load balancing either per destination per source source destination per packet etc so you have many many options how to configure how to control your load balancing but in this case uh, what is available in Cisco packet tracer is that you can uh, you can configure load balancing which means that uh, one packet the, the first packet will go through the first path and the second packet will go through the second path and so on so how to do that first I need to go to RT1 okay and then in art I will go to the global configuration mode and then I will configure first I will configure two static routes which are very important RT1 it knows how to reach this segment this LAN this point to point link point to point link because they are directly connected however RT1 doesn't know how to reach this point to point link these two point to point links plus this LAN so I need to uh, configure static routes for 10 1 Two zero, so it should go through this exit interface zero zero zero. So IP route through ten one two zero ten one two zero. The subnet mask in quad decimal notation. It will be something like this, and the exit interface will be serial slash zero serial zero slash zero slash zero. Okay, so this is for network segment ten dot one dot two dot zero, and then. I have to teach RT1 how to reach this point-to-point -point link, which is 10.1.3.0. So I build, I add another static route, which says that whenever you receive a packet to this destination network, something like this, just forward it through this exit interface, which is serial 001. Okay, so I'm going to put the name of the interface, serial 001. Okay, good. So far, so good. Now I need to do load balancing to reach this uh, segment 172.31.0.0. So what I will do, I will do this IP route. I will do two static routes, 172.31.0.0 with a subnet mask slash, 30, slash 24, which is in quad decimal notation in the, in the quad in decimal uh, notation. It will be 255.255.255.0. And the exit interface will be serial 000. And then the same destination 172.31.0.0. But this time the packet will be forwarded through the, the other interface, which is serial 001. So the first time the packet was sent through this exit interface serial 000. And the second time the packet will be sent through this ser in, uh, exit interface serial 001. So here I'll put 001. Now, <laughs> Let's check our routing table, show IP route, only static route. And you see we have the static route to this segment. Uh, okay, it will go, packets will go through this exit interface. We have a static route to this destination network and packet will go through this exit interface. And then I have this destination network, but here we have load balancing. So two routes exist for the same destination and the, the router can forward packets through this uh, exit interface or through this exit interface. But when you see something that like this, it means we have two different paths for the same destination, which means most likely we have load balancing. So load balancing is there, and we're going to see how it, uh, uh, it, how it works. Now I go to the, uh, okay, I can do something here. I can save this configuration, okay? not to lose it and I go to RT4 so for RT4 I will do the same thing global configuration and then in RT4 I'm going to configure RT4 basically with this static routes IP route so in order for RT4 to reach this segment 10.1.0.0 10.1.0.0 with a subnet mask 255.255.255.255 okay so what happens uh, RT4 should simply forward the packet through the exit inter interface serial 020 serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 okay and for RT4 to forward packet to this destination network 10110 okay 10110 so I can do this edit the previous entry uh, it should simply forward it through the exit interface serial 000 okay I can do this now 
just simple editing. Now I have two routes to these point-to-point -point links. Now from RT4, I can do the same thing as previous. I can do load balancing, so uh, IP route to 172.16.0.0, subnet mask is 255.255.0, 255.255.0. And what should be the exit interface? It will be serial dot. Uh, it will be serial zero slash two slash zero. Serial zero slash two slash zero. And there is another way to reach the same destination one seventy two sixteen zero zero. It will be by using the other exit interface serial zero zero zero. Okay, so I'm going to put this. Now let's just let's display our. Uh, routing table, I, I just display the static route. So what we notice, we have one uh, static route to this destination network 10.1.0.0 and it can be reached through the exit interface. The packet will be forwarded uh, through exit interface serial 0.0.0.2.0. We have another static route to destination network 10.1.1.0. The exit interface is serial 0.0.0. .0 .0. But when, when we reach this uh, destination here, 172.16.0.0, we notice that we have two entries. So packet can be sent through this exit interface, uh, uh, and it can also be sent through this exit interface. But in this case, since two routes exist for the same destination, it means load balancing is there. So what I will do now, first thing I'm going to save this configuration. What I will do now, I will go to host, okay? my computer here, I can check that configuration is already there. So this is the IP address 172.16.01, subnet mask, uh, default gateway 172.16.0100, which is the IP address of the interface of a router connected to the same LAN. Okay, now from this uh, router, I try, the first thing I do is I ping my default gateway to check if everything is fine. Okay, this is a common practice. All right, so it works. Now, after that, I'm going to ping the server, which is 172.31.0.1. Uh, 172.31.0.1. No. Let's see if it works. So normally everything is configured. All routers are configured with the necessary routes. You see now, we have reply. We have this reply, which means that uh, the server is reachable. Now what I do, I'm going to do infinite ping. Okay, so it will ping infinitely, indefinitely. So, uh, and then while it is pinging, I will go to RT1, and in RT1, I will do this debug IP packet. Now, the moment of truth. Okay. All right. So, I will I will stop here. Now let's see what happens. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So. I have a packet coming from uh, host 172.16.01 and this packet is sent through the serial interface serial 001 which is this interface of router. Now the next packet which comes from host 172.16.01 here so this when and this tenant to server 172.31.0.1 look this packet now is forwarded by router RT1 through serial 000. Okay, so here it was forwarded through zero serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 1, and the second packet was forwarded through the serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0. Now let's see uh, a third packet sourced from host 172.16.0.1 and destined to the same destination 172.31.0.1, which is our web server. Look, this packet now is sent through. Uh, it's sent. It's exi it exists through the interface serial zero slash zero slash slash one, and the ne the fourth packet it simply exits through serial zero slash zero slash zero. So, which means that load balancing is uh, is active, is working fine. So, we have two routes on RT one. We have two routes to the same destination. Okay, so the first route goes through path one, the second route, route goes through path two. So the first packet goes through serial 000, for example, the second packet will go through serial 001, the third packet, etc. So this is, it works in a round robin fashion where a packet, this time, first time it goes through this direction, second time it goes through this direction, 
third time, fourth time, etc. So load balancing. Uh, the router is going to load to balance the load across the two routes, uh, which will lead to the same destination. And we were able to achieve this by simply configuring the uh, static route so like this so now with the static route you can see to the same we have two routes to the same destination which means that the router is going to um, use the exit interface uh, one time okay so the first packet will go through the first exit interface second packet will uh, go through the second interface and so on and then, and then it will come back to the first second first second this is the uh, load balancing so i hope this video was uh, useful thank you for watching